Hey guys. So let's talk about the color mix forecast for 2024. This of course is the first big news we've heard from Sherwin Williams about their decision for color moving forward into the new year. And what's interesting is we don't know the color of the year yet at the time of filming this video, but they did let us know 48 colors that they've selected in four different color palettes. This is something a bit different compared to what they've normally done in the past because this is called Anthology Volume 1 and it is a new biennial trend report, which means these are colors that are not only for 2024, apparently, but for two years. So every two years, we're going to see a new collection of colors. So what I wanted to do today was go through these colors with you on a more broad scale. We're going to go through each of these four palettes. There's some pretty cool choices here. And I'm going to tell you my favorite color from each palette. Maybe I'll do color quickies on some of these of you. Convince me in the comment section down below. So I got my laptop here and let's talk about the first collection, which is called Blues and Greens. So instead of doing something more more thematic. We're just going with what the colors are basically. Blues and greens. I'm going to put these on the screen for you. As you can see, there is potentially a little more blue than green here, which is surprising to me. Like I find that green has been taking off in the design world. It's a color that I like to use as much as possible, but it seems that people are still gravitating towards cooler colors like these bluey cool grays. Upward, for example, Stardew, and then you have the more blue focused colors colors like Smoky Azurite, Georgian Bay, and Indigo. Pretty beautiful colors, to be honest. And what I like here is they've included Evergreen Fog as part of this palette. Sherwin-Williams does this a lot. They harken back to previous colors of the year, which kind of tells me that Sherwin-Williams, they feel pretty confident in their color choice selections. They're not designated colors as color of the year and then being like, oh, it's not cool anymore two years later. No, no, they're standing by their choice. Their 2022 color of the year, Evergreen Fog is part of this palette. And they do that a bit later on as well, which is cool. Anyway, my favorite color, first impression from this bunch, it's not Evergreen Fog. It's not Honeydew, believe it or not, which is kind of a greenish color, which I enjoy. It is the one in the example. It's Billiard Green, a beautiful, deep forest green, extremely rich, a color that you don't need to reserve for accent use. Paint your whole room with this. It's beautiful, especially if you have lighter floors to reflect some of that light back into the space. Really, really nice. Overall, I do like this palette because of course it contains greens. I just wish there was a little more green, but that's my own bias. So next up is an interesting one to me. It's reds and purples. And this is cool because yeah, we've seen a lot of reds be more prominent in design. Of course, red and point was the recent color of the year back in 2023. And sure enough, it makes an appearance in this color palette. So another example of Sherwin-Williams doubling down on their choices. I think their choice of purple being the pairing here is an interesting one because it's not something that you see very often in design. Yeah, there is the mauves and the violets that can kind of creep into some of the neutrals as undertones. But in terms of color, in terms of pure purple hue, it is kind of polarizing. When we look at these colors here, there are there are some neutral leaning reddish purpley colors, I guess you could say. You have apricots, you have a coral happening, and then these sort of browny colors that aren't really red, but they have maybe a faint red undertone happening. Soft apricot, for example, is straight up more of an orange undertone rather than red. A little bit of false advertising. Ravishing coral, on the other hand, yeah. Coral definitely has some of that red happening. Even though I don't think this is the most practical color palette, if you're thinking of alternative colors or maybe some accent choices, there really is a lot of variety here. You have dragon fruit and very berry, for example, really vibrant, juicy colors. Habanero chili is just super fiery and exciting. And then Rhapsody lilac, which is powdery, it's effervescent, it has this sort of sparkling quality to it. Very elegant, and I actually love how it interacts with the furniture in this picture. But if I had to pick my favorite of the bunch, Hmm, that's a tough one, actually. I gotta go with Sachet Sand because of that name. Sachet Away. I have one thing to say. Sachet. Uh huh. Chante. That's right. Chante. Sachet. Chante. 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 Yeah. What I like about this palette though is the neutrals that they do pick, they all have something a little bit different. You have a red undertone in Sachet Sand, purple undertone in Intuitive, and then Chinchilla, which again leans a little more to the purple side, but it is shaded and very heavy. Kind of feels special for a very dark gray. I don't know, I like it. Next up we have Deeps and Darks, which is very, very popular. Instead of embracing color, I'm seeing more and more people embrace darkness, 
deep, dark, rich, saturated colors. And there are quite a few options here. You have a dark harvest, kind of goldy brown. You got some slate grays happening, really dark blues, blacks. One notable omission here is urbane bronze, which would be a perfect fit as a former color of the year within this palette. But you do have half calf and antiquarian brown that are kind of within that same sort of wheelhouse. Mossy gold as well, but that's definitely more ochre leaning. My favorite favorite of the bunch, excluding, I guess, peppercorn and tricorn black, because those are staples within Sherwin Williams, not as exciting as carnelian, which is this beautiful, dark, burgundy, purple fusion. It has this warmth to it that you may not expect in person. It just works beautifully in a contemporary setting. A lot of people are embracing off-whites, and natural materials. This color works perfectly with all of that. And it's not something that you would expect. It has an unexpected quality to it. It's not navy blue, it's not even forest green. It has this lovely rich red wine coloration that I enjoy. And then number four, we have delicate tints. Now, of course, tints are colors that are whitened. So they contain a lot of white to make themselves feel more airy and pastel. And that's what we're getting here. There's a ton of off-whites here. Not a ton to be excited about to be honest. But if you are into that minimalist lifestyle, you don't need a lot of saturation. This is a color palette that could appeal to you. The only issue I have with it, because these are all tints, they're all lighter colors, the differences between them become way more subtle and hard to determine. So that will lead to a lot more color testing, which is unfortunate because that could be a headache. But that being said, there's a lot of tried and true colors, hair and plume, egret white, drift of mist, silver strand, even light French gray and Skyline Steel. These are all awesome colors. But if I had to pick one of the bunch, gotta go with Snowbound. The brightest and whitest color amongst other off-whites, but I find it's an amazing and very useful color to have in your arsenal when you're thinking of whites because it's clean, it's crisp, it's not too overpowering either. And I just find it works in a number of situations. And it's no surprise that it's part of this color palette. Now, of all four of these, which one was your favorite? Which one do you want me to review as part of our Color Quickie series? Please let me know in the description down below. And also, please check out our Patreon because that is the number one way to further support what we do on this channel. I'm a full-time YouTuber, and in order to continue doing this, we need your help. Support us on Patreon and get some extra exclusive content that we release every single Sunday on there. We must have at least 30 completely new videos there for you to check out. Link down below. And if you want to revisit some of last year's color mix forecast, you can check it out right over here.